Ford has been such a, an extraordinary influence on my, my life, my cinematic uh, just enjoyment of uh, uh, art and life, really. And has been such a heavy influence on me and still is. Uh, stagecoach, maybe. I remember dying to see Stagecoach. I was eight. I was five years old and was on a re-release. And I only saw the trailer, but my parents wouldn't take me. It was, in, I was, <laughs> it was one of those things. And, and to this day, I, like, in my mind, I've never really seen the film. You know, because if I'd seen it then, it would have been something in, 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 in just embedded in my, in, my, in my brains in a way. But uh, the very first one that I saw was, uh, was The Quiet Man. And uh, it was 1952. I was 10 years old. Uh, it was on a Saturday afternoon, Lowe's Theater, 6th Street, 2nd Avenue, and the uh, place was in an uproar. A warm, wild film, very funny, and I must say, visually, one of the most beautiful things ever put on film. I mean, along with that and the red shoes and the river, uh, Remois the River, uh, it's uh, an extraordinary, uh, extraordinarily uh, beautifully made, uh, beautifully shot film. Um, uh, I understand it was misty and rainy all the time, but boy, did that help that technicolor. And a sense of authenticity of the people, of the place, um, and also a film that's in very, very strong need of restoration right now. Hopefully we can pull that off one of these days. But in any event, it was a very moving experience, and, but it was, a, it was a wonderful experience for young people, too. It was, a, um, it was uh, full of life um, uh, and uh, a great deal of humor and characters that, even though we came from an Italian-American background, we're beginning to feel an affinity with the nature of the Irish and the Irish American in the films the way John Ford portrayed them. Uh, and I mean this also my, my parents watching Ford films on TV, watching How Green Was My Valley, for example, was something that uh, was universal in terms of all families, working class families. <clears throat> this is something that, that, that sustained Ford all the way through for me and was a major influence on me because of that. But The Quiet Man is just decidedly Irish, there's no doubt about that. And, but, you know, The Quiet Man is a picture that, that uh, uh, there are issues with, and uh, I, you need a whole other show just on that one film. What's the issue, what do you mean with issues? And the way the people behave, uh, and the nature of the, the uh, taking of the wife, um, the, uh, the nature of uh, the battling, the physical, the physical uh, conflict between uh, uh, Wayne and O'Hara, you know. Uh, but it all seems to me you know, which is certainly politically, politically incorrect today. But it all seems to me, dealing with Victor McLaughlin, the brother, the sense of honor, sense of dignity, a sense of uh, uh, ritual, a sense of ritual from a time and a place that ultimately she takes that bat, there's a shillelagh or whatever it is, that an old woman gives uh, Wayne to beat her up with, the wife, you know, and... Uh, <laughs> At the end, she takes it. After, they, after, all the, after all the battling is over, she takes it and throws it away. He's not going to touch her. <laughs> she wins, you know. <laughs> Myself and my friends went to see The Searchers at the Criterion Theater uptown. We had just graduated that, that day from parochial school, the eighth grade. And I guess we were 12 or 13 years old. And uh, we treated ourselves to go see The Searchers. We came in in the middle, which was the usual at the time. You'd come in the middle and you'd watch the beginning again. And there it was in Vista Vision, you know, this extraordinary movie. And how, what happens? You go see a Western directed by John Ford, whom by that time I kind of figured out was this terrific director, and John Wayne in it. And by that time I put the two names together when they were both on a film. It was really very interesting for boys particularly. And you sit there and suddenly this character, this lonely character, comes out of the, out of the desert or something. And uh, uh, he's absolutely terrifying. I mean, he's filled with all... Well, he's filled with... He, he just literally... Um, acts out the racism, the worst aspects of racism of our country, you know, and it's right there. It's right there. And you could see the hate. You could see it building. It could also understand how he could go that way. doesn't mean it's the old story that Travis has a fantasy. What makes him crazy and what makes another person not crazy is that Travis acts it out. You see, so this man is acting it out and he becomes obsessive like that extraordinary scene and they're sitting there, they're st sitting on their horses in the birch trees and the snow is coming down. He says, we'll find them. Uh, sure is the turning of the earth. It's like, and he's a poet, you see. He's a poet, too. He's a poet of hatred, you know. And he just shows us the worst part of ourselves that's coming out of the late 40s, early 50s. He just brings it right up to the surface, um, so we have to deal with it. You really get his character in the moment when, uh, when they unearth a, a grave of a, a dead Indian. And, um, and there's some disagreement they're discussing. They're arguing suddenly... John Wayne says, John Wayne says uh, Ethan Edwards says, let's finish the job, do it right. And he twirls out his gun and fires twice, shooting out the eyes of the dead Indian. 
And he says if he has no eyes, he can't go to the happy hunting ground. So he'll be a wanderer through, within the winds for the rest of his life. Uh, so in a sense, what he's doing, he hates so much that he hates beyond the grave, that he doesn't want to give him the peace of his paradise. You know, he wants to kill the soul of, of these people. Why? You know, and he envies so much the soul that the young man has, Jeffrey Hunter. He just envies it so much. And there's this wonderful, there's this wonderful kind of love between the two of them, which of course comes, which of course brings out the line all the time, that'll be the day. It always, it always winds up with that. There's these lovable parts of this character, of Ethan Edwards, and that's why when we were there, 13 years old, watching John Wayne like that, uh, it was quite a shock. And we heard that it's pretty, pretty good. We, I don't know if we read reviews at the time, but we, it was the latest round when the papers had it, had it there. And it had a, a sense, a feeling of a, of a vastness to it, we felt, from the ads, you know? A sense of something special. And so we walked in, and there it was. I believe it was only projected in Vista Vision in two theaters in America, and this was one of them. And I don't I've got to tell you, you never see anything quite like it. Yeah. The, the Vista Vision image on this picture, particularly the wide shots of Monument Valley, and particularly when he shoots the wide shots, and writers or uh, writers enter frame either um, right slightly below the camera, uh, low angle, on the bottom right or the bottom left. It, it is phenomenal. It's just phenomenal. You felt you were there. But Monument Valley itself is fascinating because... Somehow the landscape is like the crooks and the crooks and the kind of like uh, jagged edges of, of the, the psyche in a way. Your brain it just it just it lays out. It's like it's like the film ultimately became like this wild, vast psychological epic that the landscape really reflected. And I don't you know I don't use we didn't think of that at the time. We just felt it, particularly if you saw it in Vista Vision because you were placed within there those tiny figures. In Monument Valley, weren't that tiny in Vista Vision, but the 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 the, the rocks, the f rock formations were big, and uh, but there was a sense of space and a sense of um, the universality of it. Yeah, but you see, here was the difference. So what, the thing was, the, the, I was used to the good, the bad guy, and that sort of thing. I was used to the the, the show down the street, the 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 uh, the, uh, the shootout, um, and in a way, I liked it. I, where I came from, I got to tell you, you know, the morality was such that. Uh, well, the word morality, I can't even use the word morality. It was a, it was a certain world where, you know, it was almost futile in a way. Um, and um, uh, you had to be very careful. You had to be very careful. You to, the respect was important. Uh, I saw people get hurt. I saw people disappear. I don't know. I just I just know that, that ultimately up on the screen, it was simpler. The landscape was vast. When people weren't on top of each other, um, um, there was still a chance of creating something new, that we, in the process of creating a country, in a way, a, a whole new society. It's very important for young filmmakers, for a newer generation of filmmakers, to be aware of his work, 